What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. In this video, we're gonna check out an awesome new extension from Fredo 6 for adding hatching to your section cuts in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Fredo section is a brand new extension from Fredo 6 designed to help you add section hatching to your models. This is especially valuable for doing things like indicating materiality of objects in your section cuts, as well as helping you create like great details and other things like that. It's been a requested feature in SketchUp for some time, and Fredo 6 is now rolled it out. And so there is also a documentation page um, that I will link to in the notes down below where you can go and actually check out like the full documentation of this extension. So um, definitely take a look at that because there's some things in here that uh, it's very helpful to go ahead and read through the way this is intended to work. Now, currently this is listed as being free until the 1st of April, 2026. And then it looks like it's going to go to paid. Um, but um, Fredo's always been pretty reasonable about the price of his extensions. This is definitely something that's at least worth going and checking out while it's in the free version and seeing if you like it. Um, but this does a number of different things. And so let's hop over into SketchUp and take a look at the way that it works. Okay. And so the way this works is it uses any section planes that you're having your model to generate section cut faces that um, have materials applied to them that you can then take to a layout or something like that. So um, it's a pretty cool implementation. The way that it works is first off, you need to have a section cut in your scene. So we're just going to add a section plane right here like so. And one thing to note about this is it won't work if you don't have any scenes in your model. So we need to add at least one scene. In this case, I'm going to add a scene right here. Uh, we can update the selected style. That's fine. Um, so now I have a scene in my model. And notice how there's three options in here for the different computing of section cuts that you can do. So you can compute the section cuts for the current scene, all scenes, or selected scenes. In this case, we're just going to click on this first button right here for compute section cuts in current scene. So if I click and click on this, what it's going to do is it's going to apply a section cut that's in here. This is applying section fills automatically to these objects down below. I'm not sure if that is something where I accidentally set this up before and then I undid it, or if it's actually using the named values of the materials in here to set up the section cuts. I suspect it's doing that, but I'm not 100% sure. For what we're doing right now, it doesn't matter. Just note that it added a section cut in here that has materials applied to it. Now, what we have inside of this tool is we have the ability to apply section cut fat patterns to our object. So if we go over here to the configure section cut patterns, what that's going to do is that's going to pop up a window right here. Now, the first time you click on that, it's going to ask you for a folder where it's going to save your patterns. So um, I just use the default folder that it picks, but you can set whatever you want. But notice how now we've got this editor in here that allows me to apply materials to my section cut. And there's a bunch of them built in. So like, for example, say I wanted to add brick to this face right here. Notice how if I click between them, there's a number of different bricks in here. And in this case, I just want the simple brick running. Well, if I click in here, notice what that's going to do is that's going to apply that to my surface right here on my cut. Now, one thing to note about this is you can adjust both the rotation using the little slider right here, as well as the scale down below in order to adjust the size of those cuts that are applied in here. So in this case, I might rotate this back like so, just depending on what you're trying to do like this. But notice how I can use this to apply materials to each one of these. So this one, for example, if I want to do a rigid insulation, I can just mouse over this and click on the rigid insulation. I'm going to go ahead and bring that scale down on that rigid insulation right here, but notice how I'm able to apply that pattern really quickly. And so there's options in here for fiberglass insulation as well. So I can apply that to the surface right here. And in this case, I would rotate this one 90 degrees and I would bring the size down like so. But notice how it's applying that material to this face. So it's super easy and it's adding all of those section cut fills in a way where you can now take them over into layout or do whatever you want with them. And so in addition, there are options down below and one of them doesn't seem to be working for me right now. I'm not sure why this should be popping up a color editor and for whatever reason it isn't. I'm sure that's something that'll get fixed in a future release. I'm not super worried about it, but you can colorize these generally and then you can also make them lighter or darker using the slider down below. You can 
can also adjust the opacity of these. So notice how if I bring that opacity down, then you can see through the pattern right here. So that's also a really interesting function that you can use um, if you did want to show something behind your hatching. And so there's also a couple interesting options down below for the way that this works with your spaces. So it does like recognition of what the, the, what the uh, shapes are in here and tries to make them align better or size better. So notice how there's three options in here. So a line is going to try to align this along the longest dimension of faces right here, right? So this one's really interesting because it gives you the ability to align this along the long direction. Adjust goes through and it tries to adjust the size of the pattern to the height of the faces. Now you might get some kind of like weird results in that one, depending on which one you have selected, right? This might act a little bit different if you do it with one of these other patterns right here that run horizontally. Like notice how this does a really good job for the adjust right here. And then the convexify one is interesting. Let's hop over into another model and take a look at that one. And so convexify is super interesting because say you have a surface like this one, right? You have a number of different walls in here, but there's no like splits on the faces. What convexify tries to do is um, it tries to take your object and find the points in here where um, these need to be split out and it'll actually add splits in here and calculate the longest direction. So that by itself is not especially, I mean, it is interesting, but um, nothing is really going the direction that you want. However, if you then turn on a line as well, and we're going to bring the size down on this a little bit, but notice what this is doing now is this has actually gone through and it's figured out and we want to make sure that we've got the uh, size in here. And I wonder if the adjust will actually do that. Yeah, if you pick adjust, it'll actually do that, which is crazy. Um, but what it'll do is it'll split these out. It'll figure out the longest direction and it'll adjust this so that it fits so that you can show things like your bat insulation in long directions like this really quickly. So that's actually a really crazy option. You can use those three options in order to make these fit a little bit better on your surfaces. But then we also have the ability to create our own makes and our own patterns. And so let's hop back into our previous model right here. And let's say we wanted to add a new pattern. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the plus button right here. And we're just going to name this um, rigid insulation to new rigid insulation. And so what that's done is that's created a new pattern object in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want to double click on it and I want to put the make under insulation. So you can just rename it and move it into insulation right here. But what we can do with this is if you click on this option right here, you can apply a new material to it because these are basically materials being tiled across this surface, right? So in this case, I'm gonna click in here and you might recognize this from through paint. This is Fredo's material editor. But what you can do is you can see the materials that are currently in your model. And you can also pick up like the SketchUp materials right here. And I'm just going to click in here under patterns, but this has all of the materials that are applied in here under patterns. And so like, say that I wanted to add, um, we probably don't want to do this, but say we wanted to add this concrete block material as a rigid insulation pattern. Notice what that's going to do is that's going to take that material. It's going to generate it as a pattern right here. Well, now I can take that rigid insulation number two, and I can apply it to the surface. And so I'm going to bring the scaling down, but you can generate and create your own patterns that are going to live inside of your model just by doing this. So say I wanted to rotate this like 45 degrees or something like that, I could do that. Um, but I've got like full control over what's generated in here. And so basically the patterns in this case are materials that are being applied to the surface that are being generated in here. Now, one cool thing about this is what happens if you move the section plane? Right, so say I move this section plane over here like this. Well, all you have to do is just go back in and just click on compute section cuts and it'll recompute this in this location. And by the way, if we toggle this off, so if we toggle our active section cut off, you can see what it's doing. It's basically creating a face in here um, that's then allowing you to apply those materials to this. So if I remake this a new active cut, and then I click on the option for update right here. It's going to update this wherever that section cut is going to be. And then say you've got a working view, right, where you don't want any of this stuff. So I'm just going to add this. We're going to save this as a new style. I'm going to move this to the left. We're going to call this working view. 
you've got the option right here to toggle the visibility of those section cuts in here. And so notice how this section cut is only going to show up in the scene that has that uh, section fill applied to it right here. And so in this case, um, if it ever shows up like this with the fill covering it, just click on the option to compute section cuts again, and it'll uh, pop this up right here. Okay, and so one thing that's really important, and I kind of had an issue here that I can't make it show again, <laughs> um, but when you send this over to layout, one thing that's going to be really important is when you look at your layout document right here, um, you want to make sure that you reference the scale over here on the right. So in this case, I've got this in here as like a um, one and a half inch equals one foot. You need to note the one to eight over here, and you need to go back into Fredo section and you need to make sure you click on this option on the right right here for um, paper scale and pattern mode for current scene and you need to make sure they match. So in this case, your scale needs to be one to eight right here. We're going to set our parameters like so. That may change the way that your patterns look in here. And I went ahead and I set my default as well um, just for this object right here. I did a set parameters right here. And so once you adjust that scale, you need to make sure that you recompute your cut right here, right? So that your scene is set with that proper scale. Well, now you may get some issues with the size of your materials that you just need to come in here and fix using the material sampler. So you can just do an alt click and you can just bump the scale up to whatever it needs to be. So in this case, right, this one seems to work fine at like a, uh, probably an eight and a half, maybe a nine right here. But when you set that scale, it's going to be really important so that your page scaling works properly um, over in layout. So you just need to make sure that these are sized the way that you need them to be. So I'm going to bump these back up to something like this. Gravel looks okay. And we're going to bump the ground up to maybe a 10. And I don't know if you click in here, it looks like 10 is the biggest you can have it right here. So um, we'll go ahead and we'll set this. But then what we want to do is we just want to Make sure that we've recalculated our scene in here. We're going to do a file save. And then if we hop over into layout and update our model reference, then everything's going to look okay. But notice what I'm s saying here. If I, if I set this to a hybrid rendering, these render out as a raster, um, meaning they render out as textures and they don't look quite as good. Now there is a way to work around that in Fredo section, which I actually really like. So if we hop back into SketchUp and I'm going to pull up a different model. And so in this case, I've just got a stud framing um, corner right here. But say I was to take a section across this face like so. Um, and then we're going to add a scene. So we're just going to do a view animation, add scene. Um, that's fine. And we want to calculate our cut in here. Well, now if I apply a material to this, in this case, I want to apply a wood grain material, right? So I can apply it to the different faces that are in here. So we can go with the wood grain zero for right now. Or we're just going to bring that size down. But notice how there's an option over here for vector hatching. And so what vector hatching is going to do is it's going to allow you to apply a vector hatch pattern to the surface like so. And um, it's not actually changing the image that's being applied to the face. But what it does do is it's going to try to find a point right here where it can add these vector hatch patterns to your surface. So it's adding vectors to the surface like so these are actually going to show up as edges over in layout right so it doesn't solve the uh, materials being applied to the faces being a little bit fuzzy that's just a raster rendering thing that we can't really get away from but um, this does give us the ability to add some vector information to this as well so let's say we took this object we'll do a parallel projection right here i'm going to adjust my style real quick something like this, and you may need to recalculate it when you adjust that style. But now, say that we were to send this to layout. So I'm going to do a file, send to layout. And so right now, this is set to raster, but if we switch this to a hybrid right here, notice how these are brought in as those nice hybrid edges. Well, if I come in here and I adjust my line weights, like so, Notice how these are nice vector edges. So you can use this in order to apply, um, you can use this to apply vector hatching to objects as well. And in, in the case of this object, you might not want the materials for the wood. So say we were to jump back in here, like so. Um, I might actually take this object and what I might do instead is I might add my own pattern. And we're just gonna call this wood vector. create the pattern 
And in this case, I'm going to put this back to the default material. And so what that's done is that's created a material and I set this to be just the default material right here. Well, now if I apply this to the surface, it's just going to add that vector hatch in here like this. Now, one thing I'm not sure about is I don't know that you can adjust the thickness of those edges that are in here. So the way that we would want to do this is we would want to go into our style. We would want to adjust it so that our profiles and our section cut lines are all the same width like so. But then if I update this scene and we update over in layout right here, notice how it gives us this nice vector detailing that's in here. So if you use those vector hatches, you can get the nice vector edges that are in here instead of the uh, raster stuff in the background. Okay, and so one other cool option that we have is we also have the option inside of the Fredo section toolbar right here to assign patterns to tags. And so what that means is that means depending on the way that you have your model set up, you can actually use the tag structure to apply these materials to whatever's inside of those groups. And so the way that this works is notice how I have a number of groups in here, right? I have a group for my CMU walls. I have a group for my concrete slabs. I have a group in here for my stem walls, um, all those different things like this. Well, what you can do is you can hop into the manager for assigned patterns to tags right here, and you can actually pick tags to apply materials to. So in this case, for our CMU, for example, let's say that we wanted to add, we'll just add the brick running in here. So we'll just select this. And what you do is you select an option and notice how this little arrow turns blue. Well, then you can click on the arrow and that's going to assign it to this surface. Well, next I want to apply concrete and I want to do that to all three of these groups right here. So I'll select them and then I will pick the concrete structural right here and apply that to my object. And then for my gravel, I will pick um, one of the ground materials. Whoops. So we'll pick the gravel for this one and for our soil, we'll pick the earth compact and we'll click on close. Well, now, if I add a section cut across this object right here, and so now if I click on the option for compute section cuts, notice what it's going to do is it's going to apply those materials based on their tag. And so this gets a little bit weird with nested geometry. So let's say, for example, that I had my walls in here like this, and I had those in here as their own groups that are untagged like so, and then I compute this. Notice how it's not going to apply the material if you have like nested groups inside of groups. So the way that would work is if you did need to group your walls, you would just need to go into this group and just apply the CMU to the actual groups on the inside, right? So really you need to be like whatever the group is that's one level above your raw geometry, that's what needs to have the tag applied to it for this to work properly. But this could be a very fast way of applying these um, without you having to um, go in and manually do this. And then we could always go into our pattern manager and adjust these. We can just sample them. We can adjust the scale if we want them to be smaller or something like that. Um, then you can just treat them like regular materials from that standpoint. But this is tagging these based on, or this is, uh, this is uh, adding the section fills based on the tags in the model. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you think about Fredo section. I think this is a really cool tool and once you use it a little bit, I find it fairly intuitive, but I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.